You have probably seen tons of award-winning websites having 3D environments on their landing pages. If you check out site of the day winners, you will find plenty of examples. At first glance, these might look complicated to create, but since diving into 3JS, I've realized it's not nearly as difficult as it seems. Take this website for example. You can achieve something like this on your page in just minutes using 3JS. I guess creating the 3D model itself is probably the most time-consuming part but once you have got it ready, I'll show you how to integrate it seamlessly into your website. In today's video, I have prepared a similar landing page featuring a cool 3D model which you can rotate and pan around by simply dragging over the canvas. We'll be using 3JS Orbit Controls and the Post Processing Library to achieve that glowing, dramatic look. I'll also show you where you can find similar free 3D environments for your projects in just a moment. If you like my work, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. There is plenty more exciting 3D content coming soon. And if you'd like to access the source code, check out the pro membership via the link in the description. The Black Friday deal is live, so use the coupon code mentioned in the description to grab 50% of your first billing period. Alright, let's dive in. Let's start by discussing the assets. To begin with, you'll need a 3D scene. Since many of us don't have experience with tools like Blender or Cinema 4D, Sketchfab is a great alternative. It offers thousands of free 3D scenes ready to use. I'll include the link to the model I'm using in this video. I'll also drop a link to the collection where you can find similar 3D environments for free. For this project, I'm using the GLTF format. And as for the project structure, I created a folder named Assets and placed all the downloaded files inside it. In addition to that, we'll have the usual HTML, CSS, and JavaScript files. Make sure to include all the necessary CDNs. Apart from 3JS, we'll need this post-processing library to achieve the glowing bloom effect using MSU materials. I'll later cover how to use it in this project. Let's begin with the HTML setup. First, we need a container for our 3D scene. For this, I've added an empty div with the class name Garage. To avoid having the page look too plain, I've also included some basic structure. There is a navigation bar at the top with a logo and few links for navigation. At the bottom, I've added a footer with some placeholder text to give the page a more complete fill. And that's all we need for the HTML. Next, let's move on to the styling. First, I've reset the margins and padding for all elements and set box sizing to border box for consistent sizing across the page. For the HTML and body, I have set the width and height to 100% and applied a dark background color. I am also using a custom font for the overall typography. Links and paragraphs share some common styling. They are set to uppercase, have no text decoration and use a font size of 18 pixels with a clean white color. Next, the garage container for the 3D scene will stretch across the full viewport. I'll make sure any overflow content is hidden to keep it tidy. For the navigation bar, I'll pin it to the top of the page, give it some padding for spacing and use a flex layout to position the logo on one side and the navigation links on the other. The navigation links are spaced evenly. And for the logo, I've added a bright yellow background with rounded corners to make it stand out. The text inside is bold, slightly larger and black to contrast with the yellow background. Finally, for the footer, I'll position it at the bottom of the page and align the text neatly using a flex layout. The first paragraph element is restricted to a specific width to keep it aligned. With these styles in place, the page looks well structured and visually polished. Now let's dive into the JavaScript setup for our 3D scene. First, I'll create a scene which acts as the container for everything in our 3D environment. Think of it as the canvas where all the objects, lights and cameras will go. I'll also set a dark background color to match the page design. Next, we need a camera to view the scene. I'm using a perspective camera because it mimics how our eyes perceive depth in real life.
I'll position it slightly above and to the side so we get a nice view of the scene and I'll make it look directly at the center. To display everything, we'll use a renderer. This takes all the information from the scene and camera and turns it into visuals on the screen. I've enabled anti-aliasing to make the edges smooth and I'll set it up to work efficiently on most devices. Finally, I'll attach it to the garage container on our page. Now let's talk about lighting, which is crucial for creating a realistic 3D scene. I'll paste some code here, but you can ignore this part as it mostly depends on the model you are using. But let me tell you what I am doing here. I'll start with an ambient light, which softly lights up the entire scene without any direction. Then I'll add a directional light, which acts like sunlight, casting clear shadows and adding depth. I'll also include a few point lights in different colors and positions to create a dynamic and vibrant effect. These lights help highlight the model and make the scene look more dramatic. Now let's enhance the visual quality of our scene with post-processing. I'm using an effect composer to handle this. Think of the composer as a tool that lets us apply special effects to our scene after it's rendered. The first pass we add to the composer is a render pass which simply renders the scene as is. This is the foundation for applying further effects. Next, I'll add the Unreal Bloom pass. This creates a glowing effect where bright areas in the scene look as though they are emitting light. It gives the scene a dramatic polished feel. I've set the bloom strength, radius and threshold to balance the glow. It doesn't overpower the rest of the visuals. Now let's make the scene interactive using orbit controls. This feature allows users to rotate, pan and zoom into the 3D scene. It's perfect for creating an engaging experience. Next, I've added a utility function to create immersive materials. These materials have a built-in glow effect, making them appear as if they are emitting light. This is useful for objects that need a futuristic or vibrant look, adding an extra layer of realism and style to the scene. Now let's load our 3D model using the GLTF loader. The loader fetches the model file and adds it to our scene. Once the model is loaded, I'll center it within the scene. This step ensures that no matter how the model was originally positioned in the file, it aligns perfectly with the rest of our setup. To do this, I calculate the model's bonding box, find its center point and adjust its position accordingly. Finally, I'll set up the animation loop. This is what keeps our scene alive. The animation loop does three things. It continuously updates the orbit controls, so any interaction with the mouse feels seamless. It renders the scene through the composer, ensuring all post-processing effects like bloom are applied. It keeps everything running smoothly by requesting a new frame every time the browser is ready to display it. And that's it. With this setup, we have created a 3D scene that's not only visually stunning but also interactive. Hope you found the video helpful. See you in the next one.